Hello everybody and welcome back to the Traction channel for another video. At the end of 2020, Codemasters released Dirt 5, which was actually the 8th game to come from the Dirt franchise. It got us all thinking about just how many good games have been produced in the process, and then of course the argument started about which was the best. Naturally then, it seems like a good idea to rank all 8 games from worst to best to celebrate one of this century's most loved racing franchises. Five, four, three, two. Number 8. Dirt 4. Now the first thing that I'm going to say is that I think the Dirt franchise has been a very good one to this point. None of these games are bad games, but this one is probably the closest to that. To try and explain the issue, I want you to picture Wii Bowling. You have a split, and the safe thing to do is to aim at one pin, but instead you try to hit both with your ball and totally miss everything. That bowling ball is Dirt 4. It came just after the franchise had separated between the arcade madness of Dirt Showdown and the serious sim-like Dirt Rally. The game tried to appeal to both demographics and pull them back together, but in doing so left both disappointed. The sim fans didn't enjoy its arcade physics and unimaginative stages, whilst the arcade fans felt a lack of energy and magic that made many of the older games special. It isn't an objectively bad game, with some cool features such as the joyride mode and the team creation stuff adding an element of creativity, but it falls short on excitement and energy, and felt like the biggest disappointment in the Dirt series to date. Number 7. Dirt 5. The most recent addition to the franchise, Dirt 5 does a few things brilliantly. The visual aspects of this game are epic, and it's very well built, but the physics can be a little frustrating, and the game lacks immersion and depth in terms of its single player experience. The career is linear, and the only thing that brings players back is the playground mode. The biggest issue with this game is that other than the aesthetics, it isn't really a step forward from the previous Dirt titles. In far too many areas, it's actually a step backwards. Again, not a bad game, but they've done better. If you want to check out our full in-depth review of Dirt 5, you can click here. Awesomeness. Number 6. Dirt Showdown. I've got to be honest, I have a big soft spot for this game. Quite simply, it's just a lot of stupid fun, and was probably the last game in the franchise that fell into that category. It was definitely further up the stupid madness scale than any other title, and to be honest, that's probably what meant that this game was taken less seriously. At the time, it felt like a strange release, and a bit of a stopgap following on from Dirt 3. But it actually kept some of the best features from the previous game, such as the Gymkhana, and the ability to drive around the likes of Battersea Park thinking you're Ken Block. The physics were definitely designed for arcade racing, but it worked well. This game is a laugh, but focuses on street madness and moves totally away from any ties with Rally as a sport. It isn't as filled out or refined as many of the other titles, hence why it's in the bottom half of this list. Number 5. Colin McRae Dirt As with most things, the original deserves a lot of credit. Despite it being the first in the franchise, this game didn't come as a brand new concept without any benchmarks, as it was the natural predecessor of the Colin McRae Rally series. This game is linked intrinsically with tragedy, as Colin McRae sadly passed away with his son Johnny and two family friends in a helicopter crash, literally the day after it was released on PlayStation 3. It therefore carried a sentimental weight, as a game that acted as a celebration of his life and his career. The new Dirt branding had marked a shift towards including other less traditional forms of rally than the original Colin McRae series ever had, but still captured some of the magic of stage rallying at the time. This game no longer stacks up as well in terms of its quality and has dated, but when you consider how far video games and technology have come in the last few decades, you just have to appreciate that it built the foundations for an incredibly successful franchise. Number 4. Dirt Rally Dirt Rally has a special place in my heart, as it was the game that made me fall in love with the sport of professional rallying more than ever before. I loved how difficult it was, and I loved its brutal nature. I also loved its minimalist and eerie style. Even in the menus, I felt like I was alone in a cold, misty forest in Wales. It came along after Dirt Showdown, and placed itself on the opposite end of the scale between complete realism and utter madness. This game did what it set out to do, and did it brilliantly, but wasn't a game that all fans of the franchise could enjoy in the same way. Number 3. Colin McRae Dirt 2 Colin McRae Dirt 2 was quite simply a successful sequel to an already successful game. It took the things that the original title did well and built on them. It was the first game in the franchise to really lean on the magic of locations, meaning stages and circuits had more character. The career mode was also fully immersive and had huge life and energy about it. The only thing that you can argue in terms of what this game lacked is the traditional stage rallying. It had more of everything than the previous title and plenty of new things to seek your teeth into, but paid for it by dropping some of the stage rallying, which is what Colin McRae Rally had been built on in the first place. 
so I guess you could say that this was the first true Dirt title that cared about flair and madness as much as the other more serious stuff, and people loved it. Number 2. Dirt Rally 2.0 the biggest compliment I can play this game is that it's probably the first rallying sim, in my opinion, that can really take the fight to Richard Burns Rally. The reason I've ranked it ahead of the original Dirt Rally is very similar to why Colin McRae Dirt 2 is ranked ahead of the original Colin McRae Dirt. It took what its predecessor achieved and made it better. Not all sequels achieve this. The physics were a big step up from Dirt Rally, as were the graphics and the choice of locations. Everything about this game was a resounding success. It also has Rallycross with official licensing, plenty of circuits and great physics and AI for racing. The car choices are spectacular and the graphics look incredible. This is arguably the peak of build quality for the franchise, and a game that will give you joy again and again as nailing a stage is hugely satisfying. Where it lacks is the same area as Dirt Rally. It's not an immersive single player career experience and it of course doesn't cater for those who want to have some fun and struggle with pro rallying. But it doesn't pretend that it does and it shouldn't have had to because by this stage the franchise is split into two different paths anyway, so there should be something for everyone out there. Number 1. Dirt 3. I have so much love for this game. Dirt 3 is the ultimate combination of the best of the franchise. It takes the foundations of Colin McRae Dirt, adds the madness and energy of Colin McRae Dirt 2, but without the compromise in other areas. The stage rallying experience feels superb on both the controller and the wheel, of course it's not a sim like the Dirt Rally games, but it's really intuitive and satisfying, so it doesn't have to be. It caters for every single Dirt fan, being manageable for casual gamers and fun for everyone. The extra flair stuff is where it comes into its own. The Gymkhana, the Battersea Park free roaming, you can get weeks and weeks of enjoyment from this game, and there isn't really an area that lets it down. The graphics still stack up well today, and if I'm honest, it drives better than Dirt 5, which was released 9 years later. It was also the pioneer for some of the best game modes in this franchise and was the best version of each of them. This game has everything and for that reason has to take the number one spot. So that's our list. How do you guys feel about it? Of course, some of them are very close, especially in the middle of the rankings and will depend on your own preferences of game style. Either way, let us know down in the comments below what your list would be and why. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like and if you want to see more racing game content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That's it from me today, so until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and go download Dirt 3 again if you have it.